Hey, what do you have? My name is Troy and welcome back to Facility D20. So the group that I DMs for are coming up on a cracking battle and I don't have any cracking minis so I figure it's time to get back to 3D printing and I only got four days to get this thing done so if I want to get it done in time I better get at it. So in this video I'm going to show you how I go about 3D printing and painting a cracking. Hopefully I can get this thing done in time. It's going to be tight. So stick around and let's find out. First thing I did was hop on Thingiverse. There was a few here, but I like this one in particular. And it only has six files, so I figured perfect. That's the one. Looks like a few people made some uh, nice makes with it. And it had four different tentacles and a headpiece. So then I threw it in Slicer and I threw it on the 0.06 extra fine quality, 20% infill, generated supports on this, but I don't think I really needed it and then sliced it up. It took over a day and it cost about $2.82. So then I also um, wanted to make sure I checked the print so there wouldn't be over, over any overhangs that would mess up. So usually I just make sure I always check the layers, go into the preview screen and just pull the slaughter up and down. And then that's when I realized I didn't really need these supports, but I figured I didn't want to waste time to slice it over again because I really, really need to get this thing moving. And these here tentacles, I threw four of them on. This is going to take almost a day as well and cost a little less than $2. And I also printed these at the 0 0.06 millimeter scale. Checked the print on it and didn't need supports for these guys. It looked like it was going to make its way up pretty nicely. So here you go. This is the first piece that came off. It actually came off really, really, really good. That fine quality made for a super smooth print. Cura makes for a nice top layer too. So this print came out really well. I was super happy with this headpiece, but it took about 24 hours and now I was only three days away from game night. So I just popped it off the bed and just easily just pulled these little supports off like I said they were pretty much useless so it came off super easy there's a few there in his mouth that I plucked out and then it was time to print the tentacles these bases of these tentacles had a wave pattern and this is where it took a lot of the work actually it took a long time to print up the base on these tentacles so this was another basically 24 hour print. So you can see how long it actually took here to get this base going. But once the base was uh, down and the tentacle started rising up, it kind of sped up a lot faster. So this was basically two days down. I was two days away from game night. And unfortunately as this one came up, it broke off the, ba the base. And that's because of two reasons. One, the wall layers wasn't enough. I only had uh, two or three. I should have had a few more. And two, these particular models just are not attached well at that base. So then it was time to clean it up. So I just used an X-Acto knife here to clean up any of the burrs. Uh, it was just, for some reason, some on this side. Used the file to smooth them out. But besides for that, these tentacles were also printed extremely well. Then the flame thrower trick. Clean these things up with the flame here. Any stranding or loose hairs just melts right away. Super simple, fast, cleans these things up nice. And this broken one, I just snapped this top part off, cleaned it up a bit, rolled up some green stuff and just capped the end off with some green stuff. Now I also glued it to the base and normally I wouldn't use hot glue, but I figured with those wave patterns down there, I wouldn't really notice it, so I just kind of made sure I cemented it to the base a lot better. And you can see here, this one didn't break, but there was a big gap between the tentacle and the water, so I filled that in, and this one as well, you can see a big gap there. So I just filled that in with hot glue. Then I actually had this primer lying around. So I figured might as well just use this one and do a green and blue colored Kraken. I have a video on here of a um, giant octopus that I did in red, so I figured I'd do this one a little different. 
So I just gave this one good heavy coat. And this didn't take too long, this only took a couple hours to dry. So then it was time to paint and I mixed up some army paint there green and some airbrush thinner. Stirred it in and you can see here this is how I like to mix my airbrush paints. I don't do it per ratio, I do it per consistency. And I do it by feel. Unfortunately I got the light right in a terrible spot here and it was blasting right on my paint so you can't see what I'm doing. But I'm basically trying to find the right consistency of how it feels when I rub against the paper. And when it gets to that point then it's good to go. Made sure my needle was nice and tight in the airbrush. And then I started to hit this with green and I tried to put the green in all the recesses so that it would appear like uh, the blues and the turquoises were um, fading into the high parts. So I just did this slowly and I did it uh, three coats. So the first one was just laying down a little bit of color, taking my time, finding the places that I wanted to put it. And just getting that first shot of color in there. And then I decided to have the tentacles do a bit of a fade around the suction cup parts and at the tip. So again, I just slowly laid down one layer at a time and worked it up to three layers. And then I went back to the head once that first layer was dry. And now you can really see this green start to pop this time around. So the second coat really brings up the color. So that's a good tip when you're using airbrush. Don't try to do it all in one coat. Um, just take, take your time and do a couple of coats and you'll get a better job in the end. So I just did this with all four of these tentacles. And then finally the third coat here and this is where the green really, really started to pop on this miniature. Well, I guess it's more of a model than a miniature because it's kind of huge. So then it was important to clean out your airbrush. Always clean out your airbrush between paints. Then I decided to use a couple of game colors, a brown and a bone, and work up the underside of those um, tentacles just for some contrast. So again, a little bit of airbrush thinner even though these are game air paints. And then you can see I had to add a little bit more paint to my mix and then I got it to consistency that I was happy with. Right there, feels good, now I'm ready to roll. Dump it in my airbrush and start for spraying. So here again the lights bleached it out a little bit, but I just laid down a base coat of brown on the underside of these tentacles. And just blended it into the green that I done. And I also decided to throw a bit around the eyes of the Kraken, just to tie the whole thing together. And I'm basically going for a speed job here because um, I pretty much got to play tomorrow at this point, so I have one day to do it. And I didn't have time to really put in the effort that I wanted here, so I just need to lay some colors down. So once I got the brown done, I mixed up some white or bone color and I just hit the tentacles. Just hit the tentacles alone just to try to give it a bit of contrast. Just concentrating in these areas with circular motions, bleeding it over onto the brown a little bit. So I realized that four tentacles is not enough for nothing, so I had to go ahead and print off another four. I done these last night on a little higher quality, so it only took about eight hours, and I primed them. But I'm on my lunch break, and I got a half hour, and I got to paint four of these because I got to use them in tonight's game. So I better get at it if I want to get this thing done. Here, and you can see that light placement. It was right in the way, so that's why I bleached that a bit. I'll make sure I don't do that again in the next video. But anyways, I just went down and I painted these four new tentacles up exactly like the old ones. And I was doing this super fast. I had very little time. Loaded in the brown, just cleaning the needle here with my fingers. Make sure it's nice and clean to get it spraying well. And you can see me um, here clicking that trigger a lot and that's because it just was not still spraying well. And I was fighting with it, but then I just threw some more airbrush thinner in there. So I threw this right in um, the airbrush, pulled the needle back, 
put my finger over the hole and shoot it and that way it'll mix up in the cup. Pull the protector off, clean the needle and the nozzle again, put it back on and after that start farming beautifully. And then it start farming perfect. So I just hit the brown, hit the bone and here I'm cleaning it with Windex, multi-purpose cleaner. Always make sure you clean it your airbrush. Then it was time to do these little wave patterns. So I hit them, also hit those little wave patterns with some white on the high spots just to give it some contrast. And then I use Citadel Contrast Blue. And I just put this on there like super heavy and super quick. So I was able to paint four tentacles and do all eight of these water contrast bits um, <laughs> on my lunch break. Cleaned it up with my uh, little man's Dr. Zeus cup that he left out there from the last time he was crafting with me and started painting the eyes. Just decided to give two simple black circle eyes and decided to take some Citadel red contrast paint and just um, fill up his mouth here. So at this point, this was after work when I was doing this and I was about an hour away from the game time. <laughs> Then I took some Citadel Sapia and put it in around his eyes because it was such a terrible paint job as I was cutting corners in time here. I just tried to blend it in a little bit with this Sapia just to make it look a little better. And I think it helped out in the end. Then it was time to uh, come out and do the final touches. And here I'm about a half hour from game time at this point. So I hit it with some dry brushes, some blue, just a light sky blue color. And I didn't really like what I was doing here, but I just needed to get some color on this super fast. So I just had to accept that I was out of time and just hit it with this real heavy dry brush. And then the last, one of the last things I did was take some high gloss clear coat and paint over his eyes. Get that shiny look to them. And then it was time to paint his teeth. So a little bit of bone white. And just super quickly with no highlights, no blending, no nothing. Just hit these teeth in white. Heavy coat too, so I uh, <laughs> didn't have time to do multiple coats, just one heavy coat. And then I used my airbrush to dry it up because I did not have time to wait. <laughs> and then it was uh, a wash of sapia just to add some contrast to the teeth and the mouth here. And that was it, he was done, just in time. So it actually looked pretty decent when it was on the table. This was definitely a speed paint. I think I probably painted this whole thing in about an hour and a half in total. But it was a long time printing. And realistically, between the 0.06 millimeter quality and the one, uh, 0.15 millimeter quality in these two sets of tentacles, it was really hardly noticeable. It was only mostly noticeable in the water sections themselves but that wasn't that important. So, there you can see it. Eight tentacles and the Kraken all painted up. Not bad for a $4 model and a free STL. So guys, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe if you like these videos. I'm planning on doing a few more in the future. 